Good afternoon, students. Welcome to another session of Emergent Mathematics Feedback on Assessment 3. As you already know, I'm Mrs. Sibongile Mayhem. There are my contact details on the screen in case you need to get in touch with me. Right, I'll get right down to business. Assessment 3, question 1 was um, started by this statement, patterns are found everywhere in everyday life. In grade R, pattern making is offered during playtime. The developmental sequence for teaching patterning skills to young children has different stages. You were expected to briefly name each stage of development of patterns and provide activities to explain your understanding of these stages. You had to show your understanding and by enhancing your presentation with illustration of each stage with pictures. Now, first, the first thing you had to briefly name each stage, the developmental sequence for teaching patterning skills to young children in the early grades are as follows. First stage, the child can recognize a pattern. The second stage, a child can describe a pattern. Third stage, a child can copy a pattern. The fourth stage, a child can extend the pattern. And the last one, a child can create their own pattern. Another instruction was that you had to, uh, excuse me, provide activities to explain your understanding of the stages of uh, patterns. Now, these are some of the examples of the activities that you could have used in your assessment. You could have used patterns in movement, patterns in actions and sounds, patterns in language, patterns in real objects, patterns in geometric shapes, and the world around us. And you would have had to show each stage what needs to be done and also illustrate with pictures. For more information, you can uh, consult your study guide on page 56. Question number two. The important part of space and shapes is recognizing different objects in a variety of orientations and position. Using an obstacle course, demonstrate how you will guide learners in understanding the concept of position and direction. In an obstacle course, there is a starting point and an exit point. In completing the obstacle course, learners not only learn about positioning, they also learn about movement. For example, jump, crawl, and walk, and about the direction of the movement. Example, over, through, around, and behind. Combining as many as possible learning experiences around positioning in a fun activity will motivate your learners to learn in an enjoyable way. Now, to just to add on that, we know that learners um, learn best through play. Obstacle courses can be made out of all sorts of anti-waste material, empty boxes, old tires, a plank placed on two bricks, that have been discarded by builders. You do not have to have store-bought material to um, make a, an obstacle course. Children themselves can be the resources, for example, when they use their bodies. You could, for example, use the following types of instructions to guide learners to learn about positional relationships using their own body in relation to those of their peers. Jab, jump over Jabu's legs, crawl through Jake's legs, walk around Judy and hide behind the table. Now, all this information is on page 69. What you are required here, students, is to not use the examples that are given to you in the study guide, but to create your own, to come up with your own examples. Question 2.2. Draw an image or a picture that has more than one shape on it and mention any three shapes that you have used to construct that image. That examples are on page um, 76. 
You could, for example, draw a house that has a triangular roof and the walls of the house would be a square and the door might be a rectangle. And then you can talk about the shapes that you, you involved in your drawing, right? Question 2.3. List different learning styles that the teacher may use to give the learners some opportunities to learn about 2D shapes. Now, there are four visual skills, tactile skills, verbal skills, movement, and you could have chosen any three out of the four. And that information, again, is on page 30, 73 and 74. Question 2.4. In one paragraph, define formal assessment in emergent mathematics in grade R and give examples of formal assessment. Now, student, most of you struggled with this question because um, of the grade R and the, it was intentional to put grade R. This is an application question. You need to think about what you are required to do while at the same time you're trying to convince me that you are not just reciting the answers that you find in the study guide, but you also know what you are talking about. For example, just because there is no formal assessment in grade R does not mean you don't have to know what it is and how it differs from informal assessment. In your answer, you should have included that formal assessment is not applicable in the early years, meaning in grade R, but in your study guide, you are <clears throat> taught about both formal and informal assessment because you might end up in a grade one, two, or three class where formal assessment is applicable. Hence the need to know the difference between the two. Question three. Understanding time is an important skill which we need to teach our learners in the early years. Name the different constructs of time and give your own examples of the different constructs of time. Own examples. It's the first one is the sequencing of time. This involves extended events such as, <laughs> excuse me, growing a seed or waking up and preparing for school. The second one, the duration of time. This refers to measuring the amount of time it takes to complete an activity, which give an example as well. The passing of time is the third one. This involves the time that has elapsed or passed between two events. For example, the time between sunrise and sunset. And more information is to be found on page 89 of your study guide. Question 3.2, time is naturally, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> time is naturally important and is a very challenging concept, especially to young children. Look at the pictures below and demonstrate how you would use seasons and the weather chart to teach the concept of time. In every class, a calendar showing the months of the year should be displayed as you would see in figure 5.2 in your study guide. Each child's birthday should be recorded on the calendar. During the morning, you can refer to the calendar and ask what day is it? Whose birthday is it? What day will it be tomorrow? What day was it yesterday, for example? You may also want to keep um, a weather chart in your classroom and discuss how the weather is today compared to yesterday or last week, depending on how far your kids can remember. You can also include discussions around season. Children soon begin to learn that spring follows winter, autumn follows summer, etc., etc. Explain what happens in each season. You can use songs and rhymes. The learners can learn songs about the days of the week, you can repeat these songs daily, like the seven day song. Make sure that the language of what comes next or what season has just passed is used in your teaching. 
This information is to be found on pages 89 to 91 of your study guide. Question 3.3. Discuss the importance of the teacher doing activities with non-standard units of measurement. First, you have to explain or define what a non-standard unit is. A non-standard unit is a unit that is used for teaching purposes. It is a measurement which is chosen for convenience and which is not standardized or determined scientifically. For example, a hand is a non-standard uh, unit of measure as the sizes of people's hands differ. When measuring the length of a desk with my hands, I may get 10 hands while you may get eight hands. If you are using standard units, <clears throat> learners will not be able to read the numbers on the, uh, on the likes of a ruler. This is the most important fact because it pertains to teaching emergent mathematics, um, non-standard units to learners in the early years. That is great R. More information on page 96. Question four. The diagram below illustrates the data handling cycle and it is used in emergent mathematics as a tool to collect, organize, represent, and interpret numerical information or data. Question 4.1. Generate a suitable problem statement or question that can be solved through a data handling activity. Now, many students um, got confused with the word problem statement, even though it is clearly defined and explained in your study guide. A problem statement is the same thing as a question. Now you could, you should have um, chosen any um, data handling activity to do. My example is of the uh, state problem statement or question is, what is the most popular color toothbrush in our class? That's the question you would pose to your grade R learners. And then question 4.2, develop an activity for the grade R class in which you state the relevant and appropriate steps of the data handling process to solve the problem in 4.1. The steps would be to collect, you get all the learners to bring their toothbrushes to school and ask them to bring them to the carpet during um, the ring time. The second step, you organize and sort. You call out the different colored toothbrushes and count how many of which, of which color there is. To represent, we will then make a bar graph to represent the information which was collected. And the fourth, Step would be to answer the questions about the graph which you would have um, generated. You can refer to the study guide um, for more pictographs or graphs. Question 4.3, represent the information above in a bar graph. Like I said, go to your study guide. Plan for appropriate questions that you would ask the learners to analyze the data. Now, because my problem statement or question was, what was the favorite uh, toothbrush or the most popular color toothbrush? So my questions would be, what is the most popular color toothbrush in our class? What is the least popular color toothbrush in our class? What two colors have the same number of toothbrushes in our class? How many toothbrushes are there if you add the green and the black toothbrushes together? In the process, you are teaching them um, not just data collection um, activities, but you including number concepts as well as colors and maybe shapes. Right. Now that is the end of the feedback on assessment three. I hope you have already started with assessment four, which opened on the 1st of August, and I wish you all the best.
with the rest of the assessments. Thank you.